Member statements. Yes, I recognize the member from York, York Simcoe. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would, I'm here today and I would like to congratulate Jason Burkike from my riding, a Holland Marsh farmer who was the recipient of the Premier's Award for Agri-Food Innovation Excellence. Jason is the owner of Caron Farms, which grows heirloom carrots that come in red, purple, black, white, yellow, and orange. He received the Premier's Award for his work that adapts existing computerized equipment from Europe to ensure that each bag contains not only the right weight, but the proper mix of colors. Jason has also had many previous successes as well, having been a finalist for the Ontario Outstanding Young Farmers Award in 2011. Congratulations go to Jason on all your success and to the entire Karen Farms family. Thank you for contributing not only to our local community, but to the entire province. It is because of people like Jason that Ontario's agri-food sector is so bright, vibrant and remains crucial to our provincial economy. I can also attest to the flavour of the many carrots that uh, Jason grows on his farm. It's fun to get a bag of many coloured carrots. Thank you. Thank the member for the member's statement. I recognize the member from Hamilton East, Stony, Stony Creek. Creek. Thanks, Speaker. I rise today to commend the advocacy, uh, sorry, advocacy efforts of two dental hygiene students at the Ontario Dental Education Institute in Ancaster. Nicole Obermeyer and Rochelle Taylor recently met with my constituency staff to advocate for better access to dental care. I was shocked to learn that for every $100 spent on oral health in Ontario, this government contributes just $1.50. Nicole and Rochelle asked that we make preventive care more widely available, that we increase dental funding to the Canadian average, and that we improve programs for housebound citizens. Nicole and Rochelle presented their ideas with passion, intelligence, and eloquence, a standard that each of us in this House aspires to. People in low-paid and precarious work rarely have access to benefit packages, and certainly not to the ones that include good dental coverage. Yet dental diseases result in pain, serious health problems, and heavy financial cost. One in six Canadians do not seek dental care even when they are in dire pain because they cannot afford it. The people who decide that dental care is not important are usually those who already have excellent care through benefit packages, as we do here at Queen's Park. I was appalled to learn from my NDP colleague from Nickel Belt this morning that this government is cutting preventive dental care for tens of thousands of vulnerable children. I will fight these unjust cuts and instead advocate for wider access to dental care in Ontario, as Nicole and Rochelle have argued. Thank the member from Hamilton East Stony Creek. Further member statements. I recognize the member from Glengarry, Prescott, Russell. Thank you very much, Speaker. I rise today to recognize an outstanding citizen in my riding of Glengarry, Prescott, and Russell. On November 6, this province acknowledged an Ontario citizen for him, her impactful and long standing commitment to the community. The Lieutenant Governor presented 13 awards at a ceremony held here in Toronto, including one to Louise Spruill of Van Cleek Hill, who was recognized with a 2014 Ontario Medal for Good Citizenship. This award, created in 1973, recognizes people who have made an exceptional long-term contribution to the quality of life in their communities. Louise was acknowledged for her extraordinary commitment to local fundraising efforts and her enormously important Yes Women Can event, which showcases female entrepreneurs. She was also responsible for spearheading and organizing the restoration of the historic Higginson Tower in Van Cleek Hill, which was built in, uh, originally built in 1932 as a wind-powered gristmill and then transformed into an observatory tower. In 2013, she celebrated her incredible 20th anniversary of ownership of The Review. It's a local newspaper, a beacon of award-winning journalism, community engagement, and charitable involvement. Speaker, I first had the opportunity of meeting uh, Louise in 1994 when I was mayor of Alexandria, and throughout my political career, Louise and The Review have always provided uh, you know, comprehensive political coverage, and there were only a few editorials, perhaps, that raised uh, my eyebrows. Her commitment uh, to her community demonstrates the spirit of active citizenship. I am extremely proud of Louise, and I would like to extend my heartfelt thanks and appreciation on behalf of everyone in Glengarry Prescott Russell. Congratulations, Louise. You're a very uh, worthy recipient of this year's Ontario Medal for Good Citizenship. Thank the member from Glengarry Prescott Russell. 
Uh, further member statements, I recognize a member from Perry Sound, Muskoka. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise in this House today to recognize an extraordinary effort by the Salvation Army Central East Division. On December 1st, the Salvation Army collected over 12,000 pounds of donations for the local food bank in the town of Bracebridge. In one day, with over 150 volunteers from the community, including local emergency services staff, they were able to accomplish this. 12,000 pounds of food in one day is an amazing feat. I would like to recognize all the volunteers who contributed to make the food, holiday food drive a success. I'm proud of the generosity of individuals with both the donations of food and time through volunteering. Through these efforts, the Salvation Army provides a tremendous service to our communities across Ontario. On December 12th, this Friday, I will be participating in the local Moose FM Christmas Kids Radiothon in support of the Salvation Army. The annual Radiothon is run by Moose stations in Huntsville, Bracebridge and Perry Sound. Money raised through the Radiothon annually contributes tens of thousands of dollars to provide much needed services, including emergency food relief, emergency assistance with utilities, and emergency housing and accommodations. Locally, the Salvation Army also gets results through non-traditional methods. One which I would like to highlight is the donation of firewood for families and individuals in need, particularly with winters like the one we experienced last year. The difference in people's lives that the donations to the Salva Salvation Army make cannot simply be measured in dollar amounts. I would like to thank Lieutenant Fred Reed, pastor of the Salvation Army in Bracebridge, and all the Salvation Army and volunteers for the great work they do in providing this assistance to families in need, particularly at this time of year. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to thank a member from uh, Perry Sound, Muskoka. Further member statements? The member from Nickel Belt. Thank you, Speaker. I rise today to sound the alarm bells about cuts coming to dental care to vulnerable children here in our province. In August 2015, in about eight short months from there, this government plans to remove clinical preventative oral health services from the Ontario public health standards. What does that mean, Speaker? Well, it means that for thousands of children that public health units identified as in need of preventative oral health care, they will lose access. The government say that they have increased eligibility to 70,000 children as of April of this year. They say that they are integrating several different programs and that funding will stay the same. This all sounds pretty good, but it could be quite misleading, Mr. Speaker, because come August of next year, the new program proposed income cutoff will mean that services will be denied to thousands and thousands of children in need of oral care. But don't take it from me, Mr. Speaker. Listen to Dr. David McCown, Medical Officer of Health for Toronto Public Health. He says that for his public health, 15,000 children will be cut off. Go to Northeastern Ontario with Dr. Mark Perot from the Northwest Health Unit, and he says 98% of the children will no longer qualify. The Associations of Public Health Agency is also sounding the alarm bell. Speaker, Things have to change. Those children are, uh, needs or support. Thank you. Thank you, Member from Nickelbelt. Further member statements, the member from Cambridge. Thank you, Speaker. Last week, I attended the annual Feather Party in support of Lissard House in Cambridge and chatted with Executive Director Connie Dwyer, who reminded me about what a special place it is. In 1998, Sheila O'Donovan and her late husband Val, founder of Condev of, in Cambridge, gave $1 million to establish a freestanding residential hospice in Waterloo Region. Today, Lissard House is a cancer hospice providing quality end-of-life palliative care. Staff welcomes its residents without charge to a home-like environment, offering support to the resident and their family. I recall Val saying, I want Lissard House to be better than home, and in many ways, this hospice achieves just that. All six bedrooms have a gorgeous view through large windowed doors, and all rooms are decorated with serene countryside paintings. The sunroom, with lounge chairs and heated floors, is a favourite spot for all to watch birds at the feeders. When I used to refer families to, re to Lazard House, I knew that staff and volunteers would look after residents' needs and let them focus on making the most of their last days. I commend the dedicated staff and volunteers for the incredible care they give to these families at such an emotional time in their journey. 
I know that Cambridge citizens will continue to support Lessard as it opens a new hospice named Innisfree with another eight to ten beds in the very near future. Thank you. Thank you, Member from Cambridge, for your statements. The Member from Kitchener, Conestoga. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Speaker, while we've recently seen a return to the old Liberal politics of blaming Ottawa for our province's fiscal woes, we've also seen a reminder of the benefits of Conservative economic values both on a national and local level. I spoke a couple weeks ago about the economic example set by Wilmot Council in achieving debt-free status. Wow. So too can this province learn from the examples being set by the very government when Liberals point at with one hand while seeking handouts with the other. Instead of pointing fingers under a cloud of a $12.5 billion deficit, the province would do well to learn from a federal government that has achieved a $1.6 billion surplus. And I'm glad the finance minister is here to listen to this. Well, Ontario's deficit grows more ominous with each scandal squandering tax dollars on e-health, gas plants and Mars buildings. The federal surplus means a whole realm of opportunities for Canadians. Speaker, in implementing conservative economic values instead of feeding a government spending addiction, the Harper team is supporting and giving back to Canadian families. In fact, the federal government has announced a $27 billion package of family-focused tax cuts, including income Order. splitting for families for a possible $2,000 benefit and an increase and expansion of the universal child care benefit, up to $160 a month, Speaker. You see, Speaker, this is what leadership looks like, taking care of economic priorities in order that we can take better care of our people. So when members opposite are pointing their finger at Ottawa, I'd ask them to take a look at their target as if they don't learn from the national example. It's the closest they'll get to fiscal responsibility here in Ontario for the next four years. Here, here. Here, here. Thank you, member from Kitchener, Conestoga. Oh Further statements, the member from Kitchen. Kitchener Centre. Mr. Speaker, I have some positive information to offer you from Waterloo Region. Mr. Speaker, this past Friday, I had the opportunity of joining female engineering students and faculty at the University of Waterloo, where they do have the largest school of engineering in Canada. The event was to mark the National Day of Remembrance and Action on Violence Against Women. With 14 female students lighting candles in a very solemn memorial, we were reflecting on the events 25 years ago at the École Polytechnique in Montreal. 14 female engineering students there were senselessly murdered, singled out by a disturbed gunman because of their gender. Mr. Speaker, I remember covering this tragic event and locally asking the question, what would compel someone to act out so violently against women? 25 years later, we're still asking that same question. In recent weeks, we have seen a very heightened awareness surrounding this issue. I'm encouraged to see our government taking action to raise awareness, to support victims, and to remain committed to stopping violence and harassment against women. Mr. Speaker, I have a daughter who is currently attending the University of Waterloo, and she is the same age as some of the victims who were killed on December 6, 1989. So for her sake and for the sake of women and girls in my community across Ontario in Canada, we need to remain vigilant in ending all forms of violence against our gender. Thank you. Thank you, uh, the member from Kitchener Centre. Further member statements? I recognize a member from Ottawa, Orleans. Monsieur le Président, I wrote Speaker. the first time as the MPP for Ottawa, Orleans on July 8 to talk about a project that's very dear to me, the Miracle League of Ottawa. At that time, I've urged everyone to vote online for this project. Though we did not win the grand prize, the organization was lucky enough to receive a generous donation by the Toronto Blue Jays. Today, I rise again as a proud resident of Ottawa because we succeeded. We did it. We will soon have an accessible baseball field. It is a privilege and an honor to have been part of this amazing adventure to build the first ever baseball diamond and playground for children with disabilities in the country. The president of the Miracle League of Ottawa, Mr. David Gourley, along with Mayor of Ottawa, Jim Watson, City Councillor Stephen Blais, 
Jody Mittick and former councillor Rainer Blows and representative of the Rotary Club of Orleans and most of all Bryce De Rocher, an extraordinary 11-year-old boy with cerebral paralysis, join me for the official groundbreaking on November 28th at the Future Baseball Field in Notre Dame des Champs. This is a rem remarkable community project that will make an enormous difference in the lives of local children and their families. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Member from Ottawa, Orleans. The uh, time for member statements has expired. Uh,